I was thinking of turning this into a thing because I really enjoyed shooting my dark rant video and I wanted to rant a bit more and it actually happens very often when I'm writing my reviews that I hate a movie so much or that a movie is just so completely mediocre that I just end up I'm gonna bust it up trolling the review and writing something that might be funny or something that is incredibly nitpicky and asking myself way too many questions that probably no one even in the writing room did at the time. And I'm gonna be looking at a couple of films which have come out ac across the different years. There are some rewatches and some recent films. Let's start with this first rant review which is surprisingly short and it's for the movie The Shed which came out in 2019 and uh, the review goes as follows. Oh god! My eyes! My eyes! eyes! Ah! Ah! What is this badly directed pile of crap? That is it. That is it when it comes to the review of The Shed. <laughs> and it happens a lot with horror movies. If a movie is specifically bad, is specifically forgettable, and I have nothing else to add, I'll just go full Nicolas Cage with it and just go insane because it's a waste of time and I don't want to waste any more time on it, you know? Tent. Doing a little camping, huh? Tentacle hentai. Oh, come on! The next one is gonna be Spawn. Spawn has kind of gathered a bit of following in the last few years and decades and a lot of people seem even to revisit it and enjoy it a lot but I watched it for the first time this year in March and Spawn is like a weird CGI filled superhero film of the late 90s. It's funny that among these incredibly bombastic and nauseating CGI effects, the really bad stuff is actually the dialogues. Why do they all talk so much? And why even bother with such a weird plot? If this had been a more action and less talking, I would have called it a fun, guilty pleasure. But as it is, damn, this is incredibly bad. Can you imagine if Cronenberg from the 80s directed a practical effects version of this? It would have been incredible. Especially since Spawn seems completely oblivious about all the stuff that comes out of his body. It could have been incredibly terrifying. Instead, it looks like weird mutated Digimon. Jimmy Stewart and I'm Clarence. Oh, well, well uh, every time uh, somebody farts, a uh, uh, demon catches a wings. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, twins. <laughs> Get away from me, you foul-smelling maggot. And I'm incredibly proud, especially of that last part. And here we are with a film that was made during the first quarantine. It's called Host. It came out last year and I watched it during summer, so August 28th, if I'm not mistaken. It's not one of the first uh, of its genres when it comes to the found footage webcam genre. It's a new level of bad. Oh no, you did the unthinkable. You made fun of the spirit sounds, and now you have officially invited the demon to kill you all. A fuck off movie and its stupid premise. The usually paranormal activity shit, loud noses, spooky random things appearing all of a sudden. I'm gonna turn the filters off, come on. <laughs> People being dragged around like ragdolls and yet another cast of dumb people who carry their cameras around instead of saving their ass. Nothing new here, move along. I'm just glad that I didn't watch this during the lockdown, otherwise I would have abandoned my only friend, the phone, very quickly. But as it stands now, host is just yet another loud and shallow joke of a horror movie. I can be very nitpicky when it comes to movie critiques and that's exactly why this channel is called The Torn Apart because I've always enjoyed tearing movies apart Based on this motherfucker. even the really good ones i enjoy just always finding something that could have been fixed or that could have been improved 
And when it comes to the absolute worst of movies, when I give them half a star on Letterboxd, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the worst movie ever made. Because I know that a lot of people and I learn a lot of movie critics who say that like you cannot give such a low score to movies just because by the very fact that it's well shot by the very fact that the performances exist by the very fact that the script is comprehensible in some way then you can never give a movie a score that is lower than i don't know one two or even three stars but for me that's not true <laughs> Honestly, for me, when it comes to movies, being passable, being shot, being edited, it's the absolute minimum for any type of content. And I feel like you cannot give praise to a movie just for being a movie. You cannot level the playing field by the absolute worst, but you have to level it with the absolute best. And that's what I do. I think of the best films that I've ever seen, the films that I give me incredibly good and life-changing experiences, and I compare everything I watch to those films, and then I rate them in comparison. And here we go within another horror franchise, which is the Chucky franchise or the Child's Play franchise. I've been diving deep into this franchise and I've fallen in love with the originals, especially the first three films. I haven't seen them all yet, but still, I think I can definitely recognize what a good Child's Play movie looks like. I don't have a problem with killing. And let me tell you one thing, The Curse of Chucky is not one of those. I don't know what's worse, the cringy dialogue, the awful performances, the pathetic effects on Chucky's face. It is pathetic to admit that it was better in the 80s. Or just the fact that this film stripped Chucky of most of his personality and turned it into just a random cursed Annabelle-like doll. Damn. Fuck this movie. Also, there's an entire scene where two people are running away from Chucky in slow motion for no reason whatsoever and it's just the stupidest thing that I've ever seen. I think the thing that really killed me was the incredibly stupid black and white flashback in the third act. Who fucking cares? Chucky hasn't been a human for almost 30 years. We don't care about an extra backstory. Also, are you fucking kidding me? Chucky succeeds at transferring his soul at the end of this awful movie? Fuck that. Not my Chucky. If you like that, it's definitely a hashtag that doesn't exist. Maybe I'll turn it into a thing. Sometimes I get really, really passionate about just reviewing films that I absolutely hate and I have so many interesting things to say and I just destroy the shit out of them. I'm, I'm pretty sure that you can feel the passion that I put in my reviews and I, I hope that you enjoy it. So the next one, I actually want you to try and guess what this film is came out in 2015 the first thing i put is this review may contain spoilers which is not really true but i just find it funny that i started the review like that oh fucking shit I couldn't care less about all these faceless, one-dimensional teenagers and the stupid revolution against the evil blonde woman. The film can be resumed to dream sequence nonsense, blah blah, sappy love stares, new haircut representing the start of teenage rebellion, action, blah blah, action, blah blah, action, blah blah, truth serum forcing teenager to say what they really are feeling, evil plan where we kill one person per day until she comes to us, dream sequence nonsense where she has to prove her divergent dumb skills and are you excited for the third one? Oh because there is one and I thought you couldn't do worse than the first one but I was wrong, you deserve an applause just for that. Did you manage to understand what film that was? It was in the, the second film in the Divergent trilogy or whatever and it's Insurgent. Fuck those movies, honestly, they're so bad. And here we've got a contemporary film which came out a couple of weeks ago. It's with Bruce Willis. Usually I stay away from his films, especially the films that look like action B movies, but this one actually seemed interesting, so I gave it a chance. It was on Amazon Prime, it's called Cosmic Sin. Did you know that some actors turn down roles? 
And of course it made me go insane and I couldn't even finish it. Boring and nonsensical. I mean, I will admit that the movie lost me after 500 years of human evolution and humans still driving pickup trucks from today on Earth. Lol, fuck that. Bruce Willis is an autopilot. I mean, I dare you to count in how many shots he actually is in, in comparison to how much presence he has in the trailers. What is this, Willis catfishing? The action sequences makes no sense. Don't waste a single second of your life in this fucking film. I might have added a fucking, but it deserves it. This film is really bad. It's incredibly bad. And then I put it in my ear. And I listen to it. It talks to me. Actually, this review reminds me that sometimes I'm so fucking mad about specific movies and all the mistakes that I see them do that I start just pitching a better movie and that's what I did for Blair Witch. Do you know how you can make this so much better? Actually count with me how many years have passed since the disappearance of the girl. So 1999 to 2014. 15 years, right? Let's assume even that her brother was 15 at the time, it makes him 30 now, right? Okay. Let's say he has a family, a wife, a five-year-old child and a cute dog. The brother's mother recently died in a suspicious circumstances. The dad committed suicide after his daughter's disappearance. This triggers something in him. He doesn't have anyone in his family anymore, so he convinces his wife to go looking for his sister to finally have some closure with that part of his life too. You've got the huge stakes of having to protect a child while being lost in the woods. You have this creepy family camping trip and you have a real deep rooted family drama. The past versus the future. Who are you more ready to fight for and sacrifice for? It's easy to see the sequel is not even half as good as the one I pitched. Honestly, this film is so stupid that I don't even know how it got made. And if I have to be honest, my version is 100% more interesting. If you want to get it made, hit me up. I grew up watching Lara Croft Tomb Raider. I didn't grow up playing the games, so I was coming from an action fan perspective, right? And uh, when I revisited it, I fucking hated it. I don't think it's a coincidence that, that this movie shares something with Star Wars Attack of the Clones. After all, they both hate sand. It gets everywhere. I don't think that the people behind this film know why people like Lara Croft. Nobody likes the fact that she's filthy rich to the point that she can build a fake dungeon in her man mansion to train with a four-armed killer robot. Or even the fact that her mansion ceilings are high enough that she can float and jump mid-air using elastic bands. Also, why the fuck would she let her tech guy live in a caravan on her front yard? Think about the yard's health. Honestly, there are so many things that I find almost insulting about this film. It's Britishness, for one. The accents are ridiculous and also all the slang that they use. Americans really need to spend more time abroad before they even dare to make films with anyone who is not a Yankee. Action sequences are nonsensical, the editing pace is so fast that it's impossible to understand the topography of the spaces. The plot overall is right out of the 60s Sean Connery Bond film and trust me, it's not a compliment. Also, let's admit that this is one of those really dumb American action films where the rule is SHOOT AT IT! And if the enemy doesn't stop, just SHOOT AT IT HARDER! Also, doesn't Lara realize that since she has one half of the artifact, she can just hide it somewhere and wait the weird alignment out. Ipso facto, she fulfills her father's promise and she saves the world. I really like using weird Latin terms. Oh, wow, I'm so fancy. Honestly, I think that I'm putting more time in this review than all the people involved in this garbage script. It's kind of like mixing the club music from Triple X with the worst things about Alien vs Predator and the fifth element and smash them together. Garbage. Thank God that I had my Game Boy SP and I was able to entertain myself with some Pokemon Crystal action. I don't even understand how they can put so much money into weird blockbusters and IPs like that. If you ask anyone about Robin Hood and their active interest in it, they will tell you that they don't give a shit. And I have no idea who these Hollywood execs are and who they think they are for just believing that all of this shit is actually interesting. So the next one is going to be a bit of a controversial pick. <laughs> How you doing? Huh. 
The thing is, I've been watching Marvel films for my entire life. I grew up watching the Spider-Man movies, so the Sam Raimi's versions. Some of them are incredibly good, some of them are, are among the best superhero films ever made. And I keep re-watching them every two or three years or so. And I have to admit that when I watched Spider-Man 3 the last time, I just hated it completely. And it was mostly because I was so completely disappointed of all the potential that was there from... that was built up from the first and the second film. It probably doesn't deserve half a star, but uh, if you explain the context, I think you definitely get me. I'm so over the whole saving a damsel in distress with no personality and her falling in love with you just because. Also, how can someone drag a packet? Packet? What kind of accent is that? I wanted to say Parker. Parker? Packet! Come back here! Also, how can someone drag Parker's face across several buildings and he doesn't get a single scratch? What the fuck? Did you use all the blood budget on the second movie? He's not a cartoon character. Also, how stupid is it that a symbiotic creature from outer space would wait for the most convenient moment for the plot to appear, even though it's been there since the beginning? Do you even understand what symbiotic means? Because the script definitely doesn't. And here I think it was referring to the fact that a symbiotic kind of creature could not actually survive on its own. So it would make no sense for it to just hang around and not find a potential host before getting onto Spider-Man. Also, it's insane how none of the secondary characters have any kind of personality or interest. Their motivations, their life can fit in one line and it makes everything feel so goddamn boring. Especially when Parker is not going through anything new emotionally or plot-wise. And don't even get me started on emo Peter Parker, it's disgusting. Spider-Man 3 is borderline a troll movie like Japanese Spider-Man. Why does it hurt so much? Because it sucks balls. I can't possibly ignore this crap, it's way too tasty. I can't think of a single thing that is good about this film. The dialogues are crap, the characters are all brothers or friends, so they don't even require any actual writing. The special effects, lol. I've seen better on video games. The concept of the whole film is just bluntly put, stupid. Emmerich doesn't seem to understand, remember that Independence Day was a success because it was incredibly dumb. Cheesy blockbuster. In a time when dumb cheesy blockbusters were actually perceived as fun. Ah! They're coming back and this time, you are ready? That's the tagline you're going for. We're bringing the war to them. Did we just watch the same film because we didn't see shit coming? Despite the fact that it's a motherfucking 5000 km CD, your weapons got destroyed in 2 seconds. We always knew they were gonna come back. I mean, next time, go to their fucking planet and kill them. God! Even humanity isn't that stupid in real life. Just, ah! We have been observed by aliens. And upon close examination of human conduct and human behavior, they have concluded that there is no sign of intelligent life on Earth. I do love putting a lot of emotion in this shit. P.S. Liam Emsworth grunts and pants are sexy, but he doesn't take his shirt off like his brother. So yeah, that's at least minus 20 points for Gryffindor. P.S. 2. The Revenge. You know a movie is bad when he references an alien vs predator final big monster chase. And that is it when it comes to my first official rant fest video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I do have a lot of passion to share about hating films and about wasting time. I just hate wasting time. And it's exactly why I've been writing reviews for so long. It's exactly why I created Torn Apart. And it's exactly why I'm so passionate about just telling people what kind of films I've watched. Because I don't want you to waste your time the same way that sometimes I unfortunately do. Just because of bad marketing, just because of bad performances, just because of Hollywood wanting to make a lot of money on our backs. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments among these films which ones you hated as well. And let me know also if you think that I'm completely mistaken about some of these and if you actually enjoyed them. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it always helps. I'm Patrick and this is Torn Apart. Ta-da-da-da-da-da. Ta-da-da-da-da.
タタラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダラダ